Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. If you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. Now let's get started. So today we're going to be dealing with seven things to consider, seven points that you need to mention and think about when discussing a hormone because sometimes it might look confusing discuss the thyroid hormone or the thyroid gland and so on and you what and what should you mention what are the important points you need to mention when you have this thing logical sequence in your mind it becomes so easy for you do you understand so we're going to be dealing with that and also the general regulation of hormone what are the things how do hormones get regulated so there are two things we're going to be discussing let's start with this now now number one seven considerations now logically start from the very first thing what especially these classical hormones they all have glands so you ask yourself what is the cell that is involved in secreting this hormone you need to know the name of, of this they have special names for example the cells that secrete growth hormone okay they're called somatotropes in the pituitary gland so they have a name the cells that secrete and um, prolactin lactotropes they have names so you need to know the name of the cell okay okay need to know and mention it all right they all have names thyroid you have thyroid follicular cells and so on and so forth so you must mention that first of all okay the number two logically now after you've mentioned then you now come down to the hormone itself what is the nature of that hormone and hormones they are chemical so the nature is has to it's related to the structure do you understand that so what is the basic structure of that hormone. sometimes you might even say oh this hormone is has so so and so components has sometimes say has like 100 amino acid sequences and so on sometimes you need to mention that if you can remember but basically you need to know whether it's a peptide hormone that's we're talking about the classification now of the nature a peptide hormone okay and then of course the solubility we know we did, dealt with all that in the part one that's that's very important mention the nature of the hormone is a peptide hormone and of course all peptide hormones they are water soluble steroid hormones they are not soluble okay so chemical structure of the hormone and the solubility in water okay that is water soluble and so on then the next thing you want to ask yourself is okay the synthesis how is this hormone synthesis there are some hormones like that that you need to mention the synthesis so because it's very vital to understanding the hormone a very good example is the thyroid hormone that's about six or seven steps unique steps in the synthesis unlike other hormones it has very unique steps in the synthesis so you need to understand the synthesis how it is synthesized okay so you need to talk about the synthesis of the hormone some of them not really all of them synthesis of the hormone another one to all those um testosterone estrogen you no know, they came from cholesterol all those adrenal hormones they these steps some of them when an enzyme is missing can lead to some some disorders common disorders so that's why you need to know some of those steps not really all of them but some of them need to know thyroid hormone is one of them so the synthesis then the next thing is the secretion how is it secreted what stimulates it the cell to secrete to synthesize and to secrete the hormone actually steroid hormone is when they are stimulated that they synthesize but protein hormone they've already synthesized and stored it so what now stimulates it to now through exercise to secrete it so we talk about the secretion the next thing transportation transportation you know all 
hormones they are releasing to the blood how is it transported all water soluble hormones they don't have a problem with transportation just easily but steroid hormones they need to be bound to plasma proteins before they can be transported so you need to know which plasma protein sometimes it can be albumin sometimes they have their own special plasma protein a good example is thyroid hormone too. thyroid binding globulin that's special so the transportation you need to know about that then the next thing the hormone has been transported so it now gets to the target cell so you need to know what happens when it gets to the target cell and you know what we said about mechanism of action signal transduction how the messenger that carries as the hormone that carries a message how it is now transformed into a physiological action okay so the next thing is you need to know the mechanism okay mechanism of action of how it's transferred whether it uses second messengers and so on to operate you need to have some knowledge about that then next what do you think the next thing should be the mechanism that has been transduced then the, it starts performing the real function in homeostasis you know it's all about homeostasis so it's the physiological action of the hormone it must be clear in your mind that's the fifth thing Physi then number six number six the hormone has acted what do you think is the next thing it should not just be left alone like that to just act and it has to be regulated okay because if you finish its action sometimes it needs to stop secretion needs to stop and all of that so that it doesn't continue indefinitely so there's regulation and control so you need to understand the mechanism of the regulation how is it regular hormone how is it regulated regulation of the hormone that's the next thing you have to understand and talk about number six then finally number seven sometimes in all of these steps there might be some problem and whenever there's a problem with any of the steps involved endocrine disorder happens and usually we usually group endocrine disorders as overproduction or underproduction hyper and hypo so you need to know the consequences if for example growth hormone is not being secreted in the right quantity what do you think it will result in dwarfism especially in a child if it's over secreted gigantism so you need to know the consequences of overproduction and underproduction right some knowledge of the 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 disease or the disorder that can arise if there's a problem okay so these are seven considerations in discussing a hormone very simple just look at the sequence follow it step by step you won't miss anything if you just mention just two two facts about each of that you've had a good volume of knowledge about that hormone you don't need to know so much you're not a professor okay right so these are the things you need to know so in the next after this break we're going to be talking about some things you need to little things you need to know about regulation of hormone so don't go anywhere after this break you're welcome back so now we're going to be dealing with three mechanisms of hormone regulation they're very very easy stuff okay so one of them how hormones are regulated number one of them is they are controlled by changes in the plasma concentration of the minerals the mineral ions or organic nutrients okay i know the classic example of organic nutrients glucose then calcium mineral ions okay we're 
organic nutrients for this glucose so how it happens is just a simple negative feedback mechanism okay although sometimes other interferences can occur for example um, glucose is high in the blood and it stimulates insulin secretion okay and inhibits glucagon secretion but sometimes in emergency situation you know the hormones that act epinephrine or epinephrine they will stimulate glucagon to keep the level of this thing high because of it so sometimes they can have other interference but basically it's just a simple so the level of what it's controlling goes back and inhibits it that's negative feedback mechanism okay so when glucose level is high it stimulates insulin secretion and insulin now brings it low and that low level stops the stimulation and insulin goes back to normal levels so that's just controlled by the changes of the plasma concentration through simple negative feedback then another way is the control by the nervous system by the nervous nervous system okay neural inputs a good example adrenal medullary hormones epinephrine norepinephrine you know that actually they have a close relationship very similar to the sympathetic nervous system autonomic nervous system so these nerves that stimulate them it's just that now to have an effect on the effector organs or their targets they don't use nerves they just secrete their substance directly into the blood unlike the sympathetic nervous system that after reaching what they call the ganglion it now connects what they call post ganglionic okay you learn that in in a uh, excitable tissues pre ganglionic ganglion and post ganglionic but this one medullary uh, the the adrenal medullary hormones the medulla there is just like a ganglion but it doesn't have a post ganglion it just secretes so that's one of the control by also pituitary hormones and also hypothalamus you know hypothalamic hormones we're going to discuss them later it has releasing hormones growth hormone releasing hormone what now stimulates pituitary to release growth hormone it's from the brain and the brain is a mass of nervous tissue so that's one control from the brain directly from the brain not it has nothing to do with really plasma concentration the brain directly surely at the hypothalamic level the pituitary okay so that's one of them then another thing is very easy to understand controlled by another hormone the, the the hormone that is very notorious or the gland notorious for doing that is the pituitary gland and it has four hormones that it secretes that goes to regulate other hormones fsh follicle stimulating hormone lh luteinizing hormone acth adrenocortical tropic hormone and tsh thyroid stimulating see they don't just secrete hormones that act directly they go and control the secretion of other hormones so that hormones that they influence to be secreted are the hormones that goes back to inhibit and control their own secretion so thyroxine thyroid hormone goes and controls the secretion of tsh so hormone is controlling the secretion of another hormone so that's what this one is talking about actually pituitary hormones you call them tropic hormones because they control other hormones and so on and so forth so this is basically what you need to know it's it's not a difficult stuff so see you in the next video